Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Sony just revealed three new movies starting with The Sinister Six, so we'll break it all down because they also revealed their plans for live action Miles Morales in the MCU with Tom Holland's Spider Man 4. That's right, Sony is fixing their Madam Web problems by doubling down on all the biggest Spider Man characters that they have. So if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. There's going to be a bunch of big stuff coming up this year. They even have the Spider-Man TV show premiering at the end of the year, Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. Of course, I'll do videos for that when they do release it. But recently, you may have seen Amy Pascal, who's like the main Sony producer on all the major Spider-Man movies, like the MCU, Tom Holland Spider-Man movies, Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse, all the Miles Morales plans they have, all the main Spider-Man related movies. She's not really involved with all the Morbin Time stuff that they're working on, like Morbius, Madam Web. That's all separate producers at Sony. She just announced three new Spider-Man movies they were working on, and it was in response to someone asking them when we'd see a live-action Miles Morales movie. You said live-action Miles Morales is in the works. Not till we make two more movies. Yeah. <laughs> She's right. Someday. She's the boss. Someday. The day. Someday. The boss. someday. Someday. We, gotta, we, we are very happy doing what, what we're doing. During the clip, she says they're doing two more movies before a live-action Miles Morales movie. Lord and Miller, who also make the Spider-Verse movies, were standing there with her after the clip posted. They clarified that one of those movies was meant to be the Tom Holland Spider-Man 4 movie, and the other one was supposed to be Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse, which they're in the middle of making right now. But just a couple days ago, it was revealed, or leaked out, depending on how you think about it, that Sony is working on two other new Spider-Man movies. A Sinister Six villain team-up movie, which we've all suspected for a long time. They've been hinting at it for a long time. In a Spider-Gwen movie for Haley Steinfeld's character from the Spider-Verse movies. There was also another report, completely separate from that, that Marvel and Kevin Feige wanted to introduce live-action Miles Morales in Tom Holland's Spider-Man 4. But they didn't say how big his character would be in that movie. Miles Morales... Uh, live action eventually mm. and I think they're probably more concerned with me being like Prowler and that or something mm. like that. I'm too old to be Spider-Man now like a Spider-Man can't have like you know. I don't you know, know that could be interesting. Only if he dies or something like that. Yeah. I can't be like you know I'm talking about like I need to roll out my IT band. Inside the Spider-Verse movies Lord and Miller said that Beyond the Spider-Verse was meant to be the last Miles Morales animated movie like that would be the end of his journey in the animated Spider-Verse movies. Not that he'd never appear again in future Spider-Verse movies because they do have plans to do more animated Spider-Verse movies just that when he came back he wouldn't be the main character it'd be somebody else or a number of other people. So now Sony and Marvel's plans are starting to make a little more sense between the animated Spider-Verse movies and the live action Spider-Man movies. Everybody clearing this Madam Web taste out of their mouths like Madam Web basically destroyed Sony's plans for live action Sinister Six crossover movie with Venom, Morbius, Kraven, the Madam Web characters. Originally, that's what all these Spider-Man spinoff movies that Sony was making were building up to with those post credit scenes. Then the back to back complete failures of Morbius and Madam Web basically wiped those plans off the board like it destroyed their connected universe they were trying to build separate from the MCU. So a lot of people assumed that Sony would salvage everything by linking their Venom universe, like this spin-off universe, more closely with Tom Holland's Spider-Man and have him show up in some of those future crossover movies to legitimize their Sony Spider-Man stuff. Like the Galaxy Brain take, like audiences will come to see these spin-off movies if Tom Holland is in them. Whereas originally, they'd actually been planning for it to be Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man to be the main Spider-Man of that universe. But apparently, he said no way, like hard pass on that. So they had to write him out of the Madam Web movie, which was going to be a prequel to his Amazing Spider-Man movie. He was going to be the Peter Parker that was born to Mary Parker in that hospital at the end of that movie. And based on what Amy Pascal and the Marvel people are saying, now their grand plan for like all this Spider-Man stuff is to double down on the Spider-Verse movies because those are the ones at Sony that are getting all the critical praise into the Spider-Verse, across the Spider-Verse, are two of the best Spider-Man movies of all time. Beyond the Spider-Verse is probably going to be amazing. It is crazy that Sony on their own can make such great Spider-Verse movies, but their live action stuff has been so bad. So them just doubling down on what is working is a smart move for them. And it sounds like this new Sinister Six solo movie is going to be set inside the Spider-Verse animated movies. 
So my early theory right now is that it'll be more about the Sinister Six cartel on Earth-42, Prowler Miles Morales' universe, that they've been setting up in Across the Spider-Verse. Like, they started to tease them in Across the Spider-Verse. They'll be bigger characters, it sounds like, in Beyond the Spider-Verse. Earth-42, J. Jonah Jameson shouts them out on the radio when Miles Morales swings into that universe accidentally, not knowing that it's where the go-home device sent him. And on a couple of the signs that he passes, you can see electronics, as in electro, for the electro character, Vulture Corp, a Sandman Rolex watch, Scorpo, Oct 8, and RR for Rhino Casino. And that's basically the Earth-42 version of the Sinister Six. There was even some concept art during the movie because they were supposed to be bigger characters in Across the Spider-Verse, but they decided to just save them for Beyond the Spider-Verse and beyond that as well. And we know that at the beginning of Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse, Miles is going to be starting the movie in the middle of escaping Prowler Miles' back trap there. That was the big teaser at the ending. The same way Peter B. Parker escaped his similar trap during Into the Spider-Verse. Here's lesson number one, kid. Don't watch the mouth. Watch the hands. <laughs> And it sounds like they're going to start that movie with a fight scene, like a chase scene between the two of them. But they actually started to imply that Prowler Miles wasn't actually a villain on his Earth. He was more of a vigilante fighting against the Sinister Six cartel using the Prowler gear. So I think we're headed towards a Miles Morales and Prowler Miles team up in Beyond the Spider-Verse. And what they might be doing is trying to set up more of Prowler Miles' backstory with that Sinister Six cartel and doing a movie with those characters. But they said the Sinister Six movie is more about the villains being the main characters and other Spider-Verse characters might just be part of that movie. Either way, I totally think it's a smart move of Sony to pivot away from their live-action Sinister Six movie plans because nobody seems like they care that much about those characters they were planning on crossing over and changing them to Spider-Verse Sinister Six plans just because everybody's so excited about the Spider-Verse stuff. Give that story to the people who know how to make good movies. The other side of this news is Sony confirming the live-action Miles Morales movie is happening, and it would be a solo movie. Marvel wanting to introduce him in Spider-Man 4 makes a lot more sense now, too. They introduce him like they did with Tom Holland's Spider-Man in Captain America Civil War. He's a small part of the story in some way, then he goes on to his full solo movie. The real question here is which version of Miles Morales is it going to be? Will it be the version they already introduced in Spider-Man Homecoming, or will it be a live-action version of the Spider-Verse Miles Morales? Because they already teased Miles Morales in the MCU way back in Spider-Man Homecoming, there was a deleted scene where Donald Glover's Prowler calls him on the phone. It's pretty ballsy. I don't want those weapons in this neighborhood. I got a nephew who live here. I hate this dude, man. Yeah, sorry, Miles. I'm not, I'm not gonna make it. Yeah, I'm just stuck. I manifested this. So what are we manifesting now? Live action. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that we'll was see. literally my next question. I was like, it's. I think it's time to make the jump. I think you're the one to do it. Thank you so much. That means a lot. Let's hope. Let's 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 keep pushing forward. We're campaigning one step at a time. Now, I saw Shamik. You said that if they do live action Miles Morales, which I think the writing's on the wall. It's gonna happen at some point. You want to do it, right? Uh, do I want to do it? Absolutely. Hell yeah. So if they wanted to do Spider-Gwen and Jessica Drew in live action, would you guys be game? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Separately, Sony also confirmed that Donald Glover's Prowler during Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse was the main 616 version. So it's the same one who was talking to his cousin Miles on the phone in Homecoming. And because it's eight years later in the MCU, when this Across the Spider-Verse cameo is happening, he just started wearing the actual Prowler gear at this point. Next big question I know a bunch of people have is Miles Morales' age inside the live action movies in the MCU. A lot of people would rather see Miles be way younger than Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Like wait until Tom Holland's Spider-Man is in his late 20s, like later in his sequel trilogy of movies so that Miles isn't too close in age because he got his spider bite around the same time Tom Holland's Spider-Man got his spider bite around the age of 15. And right now, Tom Holland's Spider-Man is still technically only 18 years old because he got snapped, but like he just got his GED, they just graduated high school, he's about to start college. And it sounds like they'll just say 616 Miles did not get snapped, and he's now 15 years old in the MCU, and he's about to get the spider bite in Spider-Man 4, if he does wind up being in that movie. 
But I'm just excited for us to introduce Miles into our own universe one day. I think that's going to be really cool. Should be wild. Yeah, that Should be, be a yeah. wild. Let me know in the comments how you want them to handle this. Like, would you rather they just wait until Spider-Man 5 to do these live action Miles Morales plans and have his solo movie after that? It's possible that is the way that they do things. A lot of times what'll happen is you'll hear about a billion different plans and storylines and characters that they'll just delay until future movies. And currently, right now, Marvel and Sony have been deadlocked in this knockdown drag out fight about exactly what the plot of Spider-Man 4 is going to be and which characters it will involve. Kevin Feige wants Spider-Man 4 to be a more ground level, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man movie with a brand new Spider-Man villain from the comics and then Kingpin and also Daredevil. But on the other side of things, Sony wants the movie to be this huge multiverse Avengers level film again with Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield coming back. Like if you thought the Spider-Man No Way Home was a big deal, they want to escalate things even further. I think in Kevin Feige's version of Spider-Man 4, Tobey and Andrew don't come back until at least Secret Wars. There might be some Easter eggs in Deadpool 3, like some funny Easter eggs from their Spider-Man movies, but I don't think they actually appear on screen until Secret Wars. There's a bunch of big stuff coming up, so make sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss anything. We'll get those X-Men 97 episodes pretty soon. Click here for my trailer video for that, and click here for all my Deadpool and Wolverine trailers. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one in maximum effort.